Hello, precious dearlings. Let's pray together. Almighty God, in whom we live and move and have our being, you have made us for yourself so that our hearts are restless until they find their rest in you. Grant us purity of heart and strength of purpose that no selfish passion may hinder us from knowing your will and no weakness from doing it, that in your light we may see light clearly and in your service find our perfect freedom through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <laughs> the minute I said let's pray, the hardy dars started. So we were joined in prayer by our beautiful hardy dars. When my nephew Michael was a little boy, he was trying to attract the attention of some neighbours as they were getting into their car. They didn't hear him, and as they drove away, he said in frustration, they don't even know they've got ears. I'm sure that God must sometimes say the same about us humans. When I was teaching, I used to remind the little ones that God gave us two ears and one mouth so that we could listen more than we can talk. I'm often asked if God speaks to us today, and my answer is an emphatic yes. God has spoken to his people throughout the ages, and he's not about to stop now. We read in the book of Joel, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Even on my servants, both men and women, I will pour out my spirit in those days. God has poured out his Holy Spirit on us and he speaks to us in so many ways. Tennyson said, Speak to him thou, for he hears, and spirit with spirit can meet. Closer is he than breathing and nearer than hands and feet. Not only can we speak to him, we can also listen to him, but in order to do that, we need to be still and to spend time in his presence. I'd like to read from 1 Kings 19 verses 9 to 13. The Lord appears to Elijah. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, broken down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mouth of the cave. Then a voice said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? The prophet Elijah had an interesting encounter with God as he was fleeing from Jezebel. He took refuge in a cave on Horeb, 
the mountain of God. And as we heard, there was a powerful wind, then an earthquake, then a fire. And then after the fire, there was a gentle whisper. It's only when he heard that, that Elijah stood at the mouth of the cave, waiting. And then he heard the voice, What are you doing here, Elijah? Elijah heard God's voice when he was still. We too need to take time to listen to God. Elijah was not the only prophet to listen to God. The first verse in the book of Hebrews tells us that in the past, God spoke to his people through the prophets. Prophets were like God's messengers. God spoke to them through visions and dreams to convict or encourage them, and they then spoke to God's people. A prophet's calling was not an easy one, as the Israelites did not always want to hear from God, especially if they had been disobedient. The prophet Jeremiah described his calling thus, The word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Ah, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am only a child. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am only a child. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, Now I have put my words in your mouth. The prophet Isaiah had a similar experience, which he describes in chapter 6. Just now I referred to the verse in Hebrews, where we are told that God spoke through his prophets. But the rest of verse 1 says, But in these last days he has spoken to us by his Son. We are so blessed to be able to hear Jesus speaking when we read the four Gospels. After Jesus had told his followers the parable of the sower and the seeds, he said, He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Often, when Jesus addressed a crowd, he started by saying, Listen and understand. Sadly, in Matthew thirteen fourteen, Jesus quoted the words of Isaiah, You will be ever hearing, but never understanding. When we read our Bibles, the Holy Spirit helps us to interpret the words and to put them into practice in our lives. The book of Timothy tells us that all scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training in righteousness so that the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. God speaks to us in so many different ways. He speaks to me so often through the beauty of his creation. I have also learned to listen to the promptings of his Holy Spirit. If I feel him saying, go and visit so-and-so, I've learned to obey and not to leave it until it's too late. God also uses people to speak to us. You can probably recall instances when you've needed some care, advice or love and God has sent someone to help you, to counsel you or just to give you a hug. Sometimes 
you may feel as though a sermon was written specifically for you. Or maybe God spoke to you during a time of worship or in the singing of a hymn or a chorus. It's exciting being able to hear God and he longs to speak to us. May we learn to hear his still, small voice. I've been fortunate enough to have three walks on our beautiful Durban promenade this week. I needed those walks. There are two things that I need to get off my chest. I find it astonishing that for a few days in the second week of July, something really traumatic happened in some parts of our country. People's lives were forever changed. Some so much so that they're choosing to leave South Africa. Yet now we're expected to carry on with our lives as though nothing happened and nobody seems accountable. It's extraordinary. The second thing concerns vaccines. Look, I know it's a personal choice to be vaccinated and some people may choose not to be. I respect that, but I believe that we've been given a lifeline to eradicate this terrible pandemic. Yet numbers are rising all over the world and it is mainly the unvaccinated that are suffering. I've just watched a man on television, on a ventilator, trying to talk from his hospital bed. He's sending a message to his wife and his two children, pleading with them to get vaccinated. As he believes that he won't recover, he even asks his 14-year-old son that when the time comes, would he please walk his sister down the aisle on the day of her wedding? He says he regrets two things, thinking that COVID-19 was just like flu and not choosing to be vaccinated. I pray that he survives and that he spreads his message far and wide. I can't end on a troubled note. So I give thanks for the wonderful bird song in the mornings. I'm sorry about those noisy hardy dars, but I actually love them. It reminds me of when my children were born and I was in Parklands and they'd open the doors of the nursery when it was time for them to bring the babies to be fed. And it was just like a little flock of hardy dars as you'd hear all the little squawkings of the babies. Have you noticed the birds which migrated are starting to return and they greet the new dawn so joyfully. I pray for a new dawn of hope for South Africa. Let's pray. Lord, as we thank you for the song of the birds, we so long to hear your voice open our spiritual ears and speak to our receptive hearts. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I love you. Be safe. And he has a beautiful blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. Make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. May his favour be upon you and a thousand generations and your family and your children and their children. May his presence ever go before you and behind you and beside you, all around you and within you. He is with you. Bye. Bye.